Knight Blade in Oblivion is a radical departure from all other Elder Scrolls games. It doesn't use illusion or sneak, so it's closer to a battle mage than to an assassin. The combination of spell and blade is very exciting and engaging. I felt like I was powerful and had lots of options throughout the game. I opened combat by casting flesh and cloak spells and mainly stuck to chain lightning and my sword with the occasional paralyzed spell for especially annoying or powerful enemies like Briar Hearts. Nightblade has been on her own as long as she can remember. She's a very neutral person and has no particular interest or malice toward anyone or anything in Skyrim. She'll help or hurt someone if it suits her at the moment. She will sell any gear she picks up that she can't make immediate use of, but she's not interested in coin either. Her main interest lies in practicing and honing her skills in open combat. I chose the dark grey vampire armor with matching gauntlets and boots, along with the black mage hood. This hood can only be equipped via console commands. I also got my hands on the Ring of the Erudite and decided to go with a necklace of grounding to make my Nightblade nearly immune to shock damage. Okay, let's take a look at the perks for the Nightblade. So obviously destruction is a key part of the build. I decided to go with shock magic. So we just pretty much went right up the path here. More power, more power, more power. This is an interesting one. Causes five points of irresistible fire damage per second for four seconds if you hit someone that is not resistant to fire. So that's kind of cool. Magnetize is absolutely awesome. You saw that in the gameplay footage where I'll attack somebody and they will just lift up into the air. Electroconvulsions, again, saw that multiple times in the gameplay section where they were shaking around on the ground. Show them all uh, is great for dealing with mages, so it drains, drains more magicka. And absolute power is when you aim any of the um, lightning-based spells at a target. You can magnetically levitate them in front of you for 10 seconds. Now, I didn't find this worked 100% of the time. Maybe is because it has this 45 second cooldown, so maybe I would be you know, casting the spell at somebody and then I didn't realize that it was activating and then later when I tried to use it, it wasn't, a, the you know, the cooldown time hadn't passed yet. That's possible. I just didn't really notice this, but I'm sure it activated quite a few times. 
for restoration, another uh, fairly important uh, skill uh, for a knight blade. I went up, uh, especially important for me was respite, so that I didn't have to put any points into stamina. I could just cast a healing spell, have all my, mag my uh, stamina back, and continue sprinting away. Oops. Descending light is nice. Uh, not massively important, but um, it is nice to have your magic regenerate faster as you when you initiate combat. Overflowing cup was absolutely fantastic. This allowed me to cast a health spell uh, when I'm already at full health going into combat and get an, another 100 health added on to my my existing uh, th 310 points of health. So I put I put even amounts of points into magicka and stamina. The bonus magicka here is because of the Ring of the Erudite and the mage hood, black mage hood that I'm wearing. That gives me an extra 120. So, and I'm not where I'm not sure what the other What do I have? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll talk about that in just a second. I t took a perk that gave me some extra magicka as well. Alteration. Another important spell because you you know have light armor and you're not fully equipped with light armor and it's not smithed, so you need mage armor. Well, not mage armor, but um, uh, a flesh spell. So I gave myself resistance to frost and uh, shock because frost slows you down and since this is a melee character, I don't like having to, you know, being slowed down by mages when I'm trying to get in for the kill. And, of course, shock, because that reduces my magicka. So that's the two resistances I picked. And as I said before, I picked uh, uh, magicka for the 50 points of extra. You can, you can choose health, stamina, or magicka. I went with magicka. Nullifier is nice when you're in close with a mage. Uh, a mage, a mage or um, uh, a melee character. This drains or prevents them from regenerating magicka or stamina. Uh, then up this tree, spell blade, totally awesome. When you cast a spell in one hand, you deal 20% more attack damage with your sh your sword in the other hand for four seconds. Energy royal. Whenever you cast a spell with one hand, it reduces the armor of nearby enemies within 10 feet by 150 points for four seconds. Another awesome spell blade type of uh, perk. And finally, rend resistances. Whenever you attack with a weapon, you reduce the magic resistance of nearby enemies within 10 feet by 25% for 4 seconds. Uh, in my opinion, it would be nice if this was a little bit a little bit bigger, because 10 feet is basically, you know, they're right on top of you. So sometimes you don't get to fire off too many um, spells because they do take a, a split second to charge and you could get hit and anyway a little bit a little bit more s distance would be nice but it is what it is and finally for alteration wild shrines is not necessary but it went up to wellox dormant arcana and i chose armor as the activating spell so whenever i had my flesh spell activated it would add um two percent magic regeneration, 2% health regeneration, and a bonus 50 points. I believe it's of magicka? Let's just see. Whoops. Yeah, 50 points of extra magicka when my um, flesh spell is active. Okay, next is one-handed, which of course is another major part of this build. Basically, I went with... I, I started out by not taking the points for power attacks, but I ended up using a lot of power attacks later, so I took more. Um, this one just reduces the attack damage of enemies when you hit them, which is really nice. Uh, Crosscut... Uh, allows you to increases the attack damage of your power attacks against the target. So you, as you hit them with regular attacks, then your power attacks get more powerful. And disciplined fighter, 
just reduces the cost of power attacks and furious strength power attacks are more powerful it also unlocks decapitations although we didn't get any shots of that in the in the um, um, the gameplay section but anyway and light armor um, you know your main you could you could easily play this build with nothing but mage armor and robes but I did go for the light armor because that was a, a key skill of the Oblivion Nightblade. So basically, you know, more protection, more protection, unhindered so that I could still run around nice and quick. Um, regenerate magic faster, or uh, stamina faster when you initiate combat. And I was going to go further up this side, but I, I ran out of um, skill levels. I was going to take more of these so that like if you're hit by an unblocked attack or spell you regenerate stamina faster this one increases your movement speed and this one increases movement speed again so those are some possibilities wind runner was another one faster movement speed in combat but i decided not to take these because i was using i've been using the um athletics training mod which basically increased my movement speed overall anyway and keen senses is just so that you can wear you don't have to wear a, a piece of light armor on your head and I believe that is everything in addition to ordinator this was the first time that I played the game with the athletics training mod it didn't make my character as fast or agile as I would have hoped but it was still better than vanilla Skyrim and gave my character some progression in these otherwise missing skills Yeah. <laughs> 